Hi guys, welcome to another masterpiece session. Um, this week, I'd like to dedicate this movie to a dear friend of mine who has a YouTube channel, Josh Palmer. Um, this is one of his favourite movies. Um, if it wasn't for him, I probably would never have seen this movie. Little backstory to this movie. Um, I went on to his letterbox account and it had a list of his favourite movies of all time. And I saw this movie on there, and it was a Japanese movie I had never heard of. Um, it was a movie that you know you don't hear a lot of hype about. Um, it had its Criterion release, um, and as soon as I saw it, I thought, right, I'm going to get this movie, and I'm so glad I got it. I, got, I put it in a YouTube video quite a while ago, but it is Pale Flower, uh, the 1964 movie by um, Mashiro Shinoda. Um, this is a fantastic, beautiful movie. Um, it stars um, Rio Ikabi and uh, Mariko uh, Kaja. Uh, if I'm saying those names correctly, um, uh, Ikabi plays a character called Meraki, and Kaja plays a character called um, Suka. Um, now, um, Mariki is a um, He's a Yakuza member, he's just left um, prison and he meets Suka um, at a gambling joint. And the two build this friendship, uh, sort of like a intimate relation, intimate romance, which is not complete, is not sexual at all. Um, and they, they bond throughout the whole film. Um, uh, Maki, uh, Seiko is. So is she's a real hardcore gambler. She's got a real addiction to gambling, and she's on a path to self destruction. Um, in the opening scenes is when we really meet her. She's um, we meet them in this gambling joint, and she's like gambling quite a lot of money. Um, uh, Marikee's just come out of prison. He's just there, and he's like saying, "Who's this woman?" And people saying she comes in like every night. She's gambling crazy money. So their relationship um, really builds. Um, he's sort of um, infatuated by her, but does not want to see her as an impure uh, person, sort of. So that's why his relationship with her is not sexual. So when he's not gambling with her, he's if he's laying in bed with her, he still won't be won't really be intimate with her in that kind of way. Um, but we really see their relationship throughout the whole film um, in a in a very in a way where you know they're not really helping each other. They're sort of like <laughs> one's bringing the other one down, the other one's bringing the other one down. It, in some ways, it's quite you know subjective in the way I would see this. But um, there are. Uh, uh, Marikis, um he really wants to show her the real way that you know real hardcore gambling as well and onto what he finds is the greatest high um, I don't want to spoil this movie for anyone um, but yeah the cinematography in this movie is absolutely phenomenal um, Shinoda the director he was one of the forefront in Japanese New Wave which came back in the early 1960s um and this movie was not like any uh, gangster movie before it, any Yakuza movie. It, it was very new and, and no one had seen a you know, Yakuza movie like this in Japan prior to this movie. It was just so unique. Um, it was like a pure film noir. And it's something that like I don't really see in modern day cinema as well. You, you're probably more likely to see this in um 1960s French cinema like something from a Melville or a, you know more of a Melville movie or something like a Humphrey Bogart movie but even more darker so it's probably like a like a Hitchcock-esque um, the, uh, there's some great cinematography and absolute great sound effects in there I mean one great scene one just absolute beautiful scene is um this um, g gambling scene, and all you can hear is the card shuffling, and the um, the dealer 
like talking it's like it's like a, an auction house but as it goes round, the the dealer changes and it's just this scene when um seiko's dealing and you just hear these cards shuffling and the actual sound effect used from that is from a very famous japanese tap dancer um, and it just has this great rhythm in there and it's just so tense and absolutely beautifully done another great scene is this assassination scene which is almost like a like as if it was directed by Francis Ford Coppola um, the music is just beautifully scored it's just a fantastic movie um, and you know it was at a time where American cinema really influenced Japanese cinema um, you've got a lot of surrealism psych psychedelic scenes because at the time um, it came in with like US culture US drug culture as well um, so you had that um, surrealism psychedelicness to it um, which you do see in the movie um, and at the time it was a very difficult film to to uh, produce because um, to film in Tokyo where the film is set was completely difficult because you can't it's not like modern day J Japanese cinema and cinema in America where they'll close off roads they had to film this and like in the night and, and actually some of the scenes were filmed in the Tokyo red light district because it was so quiet and that's the scenes that they were trying to get it's really like dark proper noir effect of loneliness and pure darkness um, in some ways um the actor, the main actor, um, Rio Ikabi, he wasn't actually the first choice in this movie. Um, the the studio really wanted um, an actor called uh, Kaji Sada. He worked in a lot of uh, Yasujiro Ozu movies, but Shinoda was really after someone who was uh, down on his luck, uh, an actor who was sort of, you know fallen on hard times uh, someone like a Mickey Rook in a way like prior to when he did um, The Wrestler and it was it was sort of at this point when he uh, got uh, Ryo Kabe um, Toho who's like a very famous Japanese studio would sort of like trying to you know they were saying he's not a very great uh, actor he wouldn't learn his lines he couldn't do movies where he had long lines and long scenes so he was very used to doing short scenes and this is what Shinoda liked about him because the films were short that he wasn't very he wouldn't talk a lot because it's a very gritty movie and it was more down to like his whole movement his uh, uh, expressionism and I think that's what really shows off Ikabi's uh acting skills because he is phenomenal in this movie and so is uh, K uh, Kajou, Kajou. Um she's just phenomenal in this movie so there's a great two cast uh, actors in this movie and I think Shinoda's just uh, created such a perfect movie in this uh, with this um, with these cast members and I can I cannot recommend this movie to anyone um, when it was pointed out to me um, by Josh Palmer I was like yeah I've got to check this movie out and I absolutely love this movie and we do tend to talk about this movie between us not once in a while like but I was saying to him what movie should I do in my next masterpiece session he was like saying I really think you should do Pearl, Pearl Flower and I you know I knew he was going to say that movie because he, yeah, this is like one of his top five movies of all time and it is absolutely superb guys um I don't know if there's many releases of this film. Uh, I have the Criterion, uh, which is Region A, but it's well worth getting a region, a cheap Region Three Blu-ray player just for this movie because it is so worth it. Um, I think it might be on some streaming sites or on YouTube if you can find it. If you want to do it illegally, but it is so worth seeing because it is perfect. It is an absolute 5 out of 5 movie and I can, can't recommend it enough guys um, so yeah thanks for watching guys um, please keep like um, thumb, thumbs up thumbs down whatever you want um, if you are into Asian cinema 
or into cinema at all please click subscribe i i do specialize in asian cinema is what i watch mainly and yeah comment below if you've seen this film um if you're a fan of shinoda or any of the cast members let me know if you're into yakuza cinema yeah check it out let me know what you think until then guys see you next week Thank <laughs> you.